All right guys, so this is actually an entirely different day. This is actually almost two weeks of owning the Habu and I changed one thing on this thing that I wanted to do on recording because it just changed the entire plane flying dynamic. So first, I, I'm still using my Z1300, but remember that claustrophobia issue? Now I put in this little tiny Radi Radio Master ER4 ELRS4 channel PWM receiver and this changed a lot. So if you watch my uh, E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution video, you would know that uh, when we swapped out receivers, it gave us more throw because the AS3X actually limits your throws to 100% no matter what you do digitally. So you can only increase throws mechanically. So taking out the, the AS3X receiver and just putting in a bare bones receiver, in this case, the ER4, we just get so much more throw. So you can see the deflection here is really, really large now for a tiny little pin like this. Like the rudder barely moved at all before. We have a rudder now. So the, the only real con I would say is that we're gonna be not on AS3X or safe select, but it's not really a concern. It still hand launches really easily, so yeah. Did we do the audio? Oh. <laughs> Sketchy launch. <laughs> so you can see now the roll rate. It is a missile. So I'm going to do another uh, full speed pass. the rudder we can do successful hammerheads now I will say although it's funny uh, the elevator throws are really really high and this is like 60% rates like here I'm a full elevator like it is very, very high for me.
it's just so fun like literally this could be your first jet and you wouldn't have any problems with it you can see it's uh, from my mid flight it's really a lot more tame but now that we have a bare bones receiver in here is crazy Alright, I'm going to start landing. Oh no! <laughs> Good thing there is a plastic skid here. So that finally got some use. All right, so that was my second flight on the uh, E-Flight Habu SS 50 mil. And I think this is still an amazing, amazing jet. Now, for two weeks of owning it approximately, uh, I can happily say that you should definitely pick this thing up. I just love everything about this thing. It hand launches incredibly, incredibly easy. I thought I was just being babied by the safe when I first launched it, but no, this thing is just so easy to hand launch. And with the ELRS receiver, it just flies so much better. Now, I'm not saying you should put ELRS in this thing to make it fly better. I'm just saying put a bare bones receiver with uh, without safer AS3X to get the full uh, potential out of this airplane. It doesn't have to be an ER4 receiver. So, yeah, I will say my Z batteries are actually really good, but they do add a bit of weight to the nose and I can definitely feel that uh, in the same place where I would put the Spectrum one, it feels a bit more nose heavy. You can see that on launch, but um, I do feel a bit more power uh, being put out of the uh, motor itself, but yeah, I'm just really happy with this thing. It fit everything I wanted for this jet and it just looks really cute. I love the Habu airframe. So, yeah, thanks for tuning to John's RC. If you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, I have the Habu plugged in on the Spectrum 3 cell 1300 milliamp hour battery pack. This time, I have the battery all the way in the front, and I'm going to be doing a hand launch start. So, you can see everything is working. And I'm going to be launching it on safe select. Now, if you know anything about me, I am terrible at hand launching things, so if this thing gets in the air uh, without it stalling, you know this airplane's good. <laughs> Alright, safe off. Oh, it feels nice. stalled there. There's some inverted. Yeah, I really like this. Holy! Don't see that every day on an EDF of this size.
Let's go lower. I can already tell. This is really fun. Like this is really, really fun. Now you don't get much elevator, not elevator, I'm sorry, rudder authority. It's a very tiny vertical stabilizer and you're also a jet. It flies so well. I'm so happy with this thing. This is just my maiden flight and I'm already in love with this thing. Uh, I'm not doing any expo or rates. This is just 100% rates. I might have to increase my elevator rates just by a bit. And you know, the Habu airframe is just very, very easy flying thing. I have a video up of the STS model, the 70 mil, which is basically like an Aero Scout in the form of a jet. And that thing was just so easy to fly. This thing is a bit more aggressive than the STS because you know, the STS was marketed as your first ever plane. This is marketed as your first ever jet. Do some more inverted passes. How fun is that? We do um, low pass right side up. so fun oh my goodness all right I'm gonna get the landing in and then we're gonna go fly on the Z battery Doo -doo -doo. It doesn't get easier than that. The only bad thing about hand launching is get a bit of dirt on it. That was a mistake, I know why I did that. But alright, that was my maiden flight on the E Flight Habu and I am not lying when I say this is such an insanely fun model. Now uh, this is just the maiden and I am having a blast with this thing. I have not smiled like that uh, to an EDF in a while because I haven't seen something that flies like a sporty plane um, uh, with this type of airframe. And like I said, the Habu is one of my favorite airframes that E-Flight has made. And I think that this little mini 50 mil jet does do this airframe justice. Uh, with the 3S 1300, the thing, just wants to fly out of your hand. It's really, really simple. Now, um, I will say, I, I did have to trim the uh, elevator out a little bit. That's with the, uh, uh, sorry, that's with the, that's with the battery all the way in the front. So 
Next flight, I'm going to reset my trim and put my battery all the way, maybe not all the way, but somewhere in the middle, and then we'll see how that goes. But from now, what I'm seeing, I am very, very happy with these results, and I think it's exactly what I've been looking for. So, yeah, let's go and fly out the Z battery. Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to John's RC. And today, I am excited to show you guys this E-Flight Habu SS 50mm EDF jet. Now, I haven't dabbled in the EDF jet world in a while, and this is why I wanted this jet in particular, because I wanted something that I could hopefully rip around without uh, having to worry about crashing something pretty like the A10, the F16, or any of my similar models. So, you know, this thing, it is really, really cute. You can see, um, I think the Habu is one of my favorite airframes of uh, E-Flight's line. I really like the UMX Habu, which I never got. But I think this is slightly bigger than the UMX, you know, but I think it's really, really nice looking. So, we got this thing as a bind and fly. So that means you need to supply yourself with your own transmitter, flight battery and flight battery charger, everything else like your servos, ESC motor and receiver already come pre-installed. So I'm using my Spectrum DX8 generation one and uh, the flight battery that I'm going to be using today. I'm gonna to be doing two flights. One of them is going to be on a Spectrum 3 cell 1300 milliampere hour battery pack. This is the generation two, I believe, uh, with the one with no balancing port, which is a bit unfortunate, but we have another battery that uh, we're hopefully testing. Um, this is an oddball brand that I found on Amazon. This is Z. <laughs> it's 3 cell 1300, and it claims to have an 120C discharge rate and this one's only 30c now after watching lipo battery videos there's no way this thing's actually 120c it's probably going to be a way lower but still two uh the the listing for these batteries uh was two batteries for the price of one spectrum battery so if they perform around the same cool so uh you do have to do some assembly to this model you have to put the wing on and the horizontal stabilizer and that's about it I did not open the manual for this. If you figured out how to place the order for this plane, you will figure out how to build it. So you can see here first, we have four screws. Well, the, so the wing uses a smart connector and it's kind of like a JR pin that plugs into uh, like the receiver port. And we have four screws after you plug that in and we have here on the fuselage and then for the horizontal stabilizer, we can see that these, the uh, vertical stabilizer and the fuselage separate. So you can slide this in very easily. And uh, this is just held on by two screws. And uh, after, because uh, the vertical stabilizer and the fuselage are separated, you need to put on this little thrust exhaust thingy. And that will keep the, uh, top and the bottom fuselage joined together so you don't have any play on it. Now, this is a four channel model only. There's no retracts, no flaps. You only, you only have your throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. I am happy they put a rudder because on some of the models of this size, you do not come with a rudder. So, after you're done assembling it, all you have to do is put in your battery and bind it. And this is where I did find that this model is kind of odd when it comes to battery spacing. So you can see here that the receiver sits right here. And uh, on this receiver, the binds button is over there. You can kind of not see it because it's covered by a bunch of servo cables. And to add more insult to injury, uh, this thing does come with, like I said, it, there's no retracts, but it comes with landing gears that you can insert, but I opted not to because I think it just looks better without them. But because of the landing gear assembly, uh, by default, there is a push rod that goes from here all the way to here. And this adds a big wire that just sticks here. So you really can't see what you're doing when it comes to the battery bay. So I took out the push rod, uh, so um, there is less space, or there's more space, sorry. And there's also a Velcro strap that went here that I also removed because it's just way too small. And this Velcro strap, 
I trimmed a bit because it was way too long and I really just couldn't work with it. It was so claustrophobic in here. So after, um, because I didn't want to stick my finger into here and put the bind plug in, I mean to, to press the bind button, uh, I just put the bind plug into this port, which is still very tight, you can see. Uh, this empty port on the left for you guys is the bind port. So after we got that in, I had no problems, but just the, the battery bay itself is just very, very claustrophobic. But you know, it is a tiny plane, so I, I was hoping there is a bit more management w with this thing uh, when it comes to battery storage management, but it works. So the battery goes all the way in the front for the 1300. Uh, the recommended battery is either a 1300 to 2200 milliamp hour battery pack. And I found that the CG is perfect when you go and put the battery like that. This is definitely not tight, but the CG is perfect right here. Uh, I put two little strips of electrical tape. I believe it was 63 millimeters from the leading edge. Now, um, I'm not sure if that's an accurate number. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but forgive me if I'm wrong. But I'm going to be doing two flights. One, I'm going to be flying uh, with the manual CG, and two, I'm going to be flying with an AppCG battery all the way back. So, yeah, this model has a flying weight of 577 grams with the 1300 milliamp hour battery pack. So, um, on a 2200, it's definitely going to be a lot heavier. And I'm not sure if you want to put a 2200 on as the model of this size anyway. But yeah, so this model has a wingspan of 700 millimeters and has a length of 755 millimeters. And, um, yeah, it's just really, really a cute model. Uh, I've seen plenty of videos on it of it just zipping around on the 3S. Uh, normally, uh, with E-Flight, you would have like a 4S a battery system in this thing, but I'm surprised that they only put a 3S in here, which I'm really happy about because it does keep the weight a bit on the lower side. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's go and fly her.